this is another print for the uh, the puzzle, the the game puzzle, and you can see there that uh, the outer line here is the skirt, went down perfectly. The inner line is the outline of the actual print that I'm printing. Uh, you can see there's three little holes. These are uh, going to be holes right there, but. As you can see here, the first layer, we're actually looking at the first layer that's going down really nice, okay, because that first layer has to be perfect because everything builds off of that. So if at any point there's any uh, curling or uh, the print starts to separate from the build plate, that's an issue, that's a problem. So right now we're doing great. Uh, it's literally putting down the first layer as we speak and it's smooth and the whole idea is that it's troweling down it's literally troweling down the uh, PLA filament onto the surface here and it's actually so well done it's picking up the grain here in the tape so you know that it's going well if it actually replicates or picks up the grain of the tape and Every print I've done, you know, many, 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 you know, over 2,200 prints, that's what I'm looking for. I want that first layer to be troweled down so well that it actually picks up the grain of the tape, and then, of course, it builds off of that. Another great thing about this way of printing is that you can see here, I don't need to heat the bed. I've never had the need. It's never been required to heat the bed, so that's the set point is zero. So that's uh, room temperature. Uh, my nozzle's at 212, okay? So the whole idea is to try to come up with a way that doesn't create problems, okay? There's no issues to deal with. So without doing it in this fashion, you tend to have to heat the bed, okay? And, and uh, heating the bed causes issues. And it's not only heating the bed, but cooling the bed. So. It's been said that if, say, for instance, uh, if there's a power failure, uh, then the power to the heated bed is off. So, in a sense, the part would separate from the, the, the build surface. And, and that's the problem, that it, once the power comes back on, it's likely that the, the bed has cooled off so much that the print has pulled off the bed. That's a problem. So I wanted to be able to print in such a way that that is not an issue. So if I can print without applying heat to the print to hold it to the table, that's what I'm going to do. So this is literally a non-heated bed, and you don't have to worry about fingerprints or constant cleaning all the time, you know, because, oh, geez, my print separated from the bed. Let me turn up the heat. Let me clean the bed with rubbing alcohol. That's probably true. They probably have to do all of that. But I wanted to avoid it. I wanted to avoid going through all that. So I developed this way of printing. Uh, it, it works every time. I, I'm you know, figuring that I might as well use what actually works. You see this little space right here? What's going to happen, that's the hole. That's where the, the center hole is. So it's going to come back and fill that in. And it's kind of interesting how printing works. That, you figure, since while it's here, why doesn't it just finish? Well, it's going to go ahead and finish up the print in that direction and then come back and fill in uh, the gaps right there. So there it is. This is the printer, as always, shown uh, You know, with the original plastic extruder because it works. The body of the extruder uh, was designed for this particular printer. It's an Ender 3. And if that arm there, the lever ever gives you problems, just replace the arm. Keep the body of the extruder. Um, People tend to change the entire thing for a, a different version, and it's a metal aftermarket extruder, and they seem to always have problems. Uh, you know, basically, uh, if you look at the news groups or the, the help sites, so basically, keep the body in this, change the arm. Uh, you don't have to do any E-step modifications or calibrations, or you don't have to do anything with the stepper or the gear or any of that. Just do an R&R, &R, remove and replace. It takes like five minutes, barely. And you're back to printing for years because if you buy that arm from the manufacturer, it's never been installed, never been used, it's never been stressed, it's going to last. It, that's, that's just how it is. Okay. So
So we're looking at the, uh, the filament goes into the side here. Uh, again, no arms, no levers, no guides, no gizmos and gadgets to direct uh, the filament into the extruder because, of course, I mount the, the filament here on the side. Okay, and it gives me an opportunity to adjust the height based on the print. So that, that works for me. And also, I use the old school tramming tool. This is a piece of paper, a standard uh, printer paper. Uh, use that for tramming. And you know, if you're into printing, you know what tramming is. Uh, you have to level the bed. You've got to level and also uh, set up the, the, the distance between the nozzle and the bed. That's called tramming. So tramming does both. It does the distance and it, it makes sure that it's the same on all corners, so across the print surface. So there we go. Anyway, uh, it's going great. We're now on our second second layer here. Uh, and uh, yeah, it went great. Perfect. No gaps, no lines, no anything. Uh, no, uh, no brim, okay, no brim, no raft. No messy uh, glue stick that some people have to use. Uh, again, I, I prefer not to go through all that. So there it is. Happy printing. And you can see there, these are the stock springs. These are the original springs. No uh, chunks of rubber, you know, to support the bed or the yellow springs, which some people, again, have to do that. Okay. Uh, I'll report back. Happy printing.